Hey guys, I'm back doing something a little different today. I uh, wanted to do a review of the documentary West Side vs. the World. Uh, and first off, let me state that it is one of the best uh, strength sport uh, documentaries uh, available, certainly that I've ever uh, seen. Um, there's an older uh, powerlifting documentary called Power Unlimited that's fairly low tech, uh, somewhat low budget, or at least it appears that way to some extent, that is kind of bare bones and covers the sport. And let me go ahead and say that this is not really a powerlifting documentary, although it does discuss in great detail kind of the evolution of the sport. Um, it's more about Louis Simmons and Westside Barbell. Um, and I'm kind of shocked that there aren't more reviews of this film. And before I go any further, I would like to encourage you to support the film by purchasing your copy. Uh, you can download it uh, from almost any digital platform available, Google Play, Amazon, iTunes. Uh, you can order it on Amazon for, you know, get a DVD version or Blu-ray. Uh, I'm not sure about the Blu-ray. I know there's DVD versions. And overseas, I think it's available on Vimeo. But at any rate, great documentary. Uh, the guy that created it, Michael Fahey, uh, should get some uh, recognition for persevering through some very difficult circumstances uh, and delays that were beyond his control. He caught a lot of heat from people online and really should be just commended for sticking it out at uh, great personal sacrifice, I'm sure financial troubles to make this thing happen and give us this film. Uh, but I don't want to give the entire film away, so I'm going to summarize kind of the, the, the feel of the documentary. But anyway, it begins with background on the founder of Westside Barbell. Uh, Westside Barbell is, a, is an invite-only uh, gym located in Columbus, Ohio, where some of the strongest uh, power lifters to ever walk the planet trained and have trained. Some of the most influential uh, lifters and and folks on social media, you know, got their start there, or at least highly influenced by Louis Simmons, Westside, and or their methods. And uh, starts out, you know, giving you a history of, of Westside, including where Louis got the name. He was, you know, young poor kid from the east side of Columbus and had kind of a troubled childhood, a really young uh, childhood trouble. And uh, that, precipitated he and his family moving to the west side of Columbus, which is uh, kind of more of a grittier blue collar side of Columbus, according to people in the, in the documentary. I've never been to Columbus. I, I don't know that for a fact. I'm not trying to disparage anybody from the west side of Columbus, but those are the words of Louis Simmons. It's kind of more rough and tumble part of town. Uh, and he took the name west side from a a gym that predated the West Side located in Columbus. The original West Side Barbell was located in Culver City, California. And it was while Louis Simmons was in the military uh, reading basically some fitness magazines, bodybuilding type magazines that he learned about some of the training methods of those individuals. Uh, they utilized things like the box squat and he kind of, you know, adopted some of those and, and started using them in his training. But it covers his background, how he started in Olympic lifting and how he eventually found powerlifting and, and that became kind of his, his focus. Um, and let me note, you know, right away that Westside Barbell does much more than train uh, a bunch of meathead powerlifters. It is roughly 95% sports and athletic, big, you know, mainstream sport training, some MMA fighters, uh, track and field athletes, football players, that sort of thing, and maybe 5% powerlifting, but it's uh, got a reputation for the atmosphere there. And uh, it is, uh, the documentary does a great job of covering uh, what, what it's like in those walls. Um, some very uh, poignant moments throughout the film. It, the, the film and Louis himself, uh, the, the film does this very well. It, 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 it portrays and highlights the paradox of Louis and his uh, philosophy on life. Louis it really is, and I love the way Ed Cohen characterizes him as kind of this Yoda figure and how he says he even kind of looks like Yoda now. And he is just this wealth of knowledge. Um, Louis himself, well, you know, maintained an elite total for 30 plus years. 
Uh, he was never, you know, he was never a world champion power lifter, but I don't think you have to be a world champion to be a great coach, you know. Um, he, he was never, you know, the, the greatest in his weight class or the greatest of all time. He, he, he's not Ed Cohen, but he is a great coach. Uh, the film touches on how uh, initially it was uh, uh, something that Louis started in his garage. He moved it into a commercial space and kept the powerlifting area separated. Um, and through his injury, specifically two severe injuries to his lower back, um, he sort of became an innovator. Uh, one of the first things he did was he created one of the, what I believe to be one of the greatest pieces of strength equipment ever developed, the reverse hyper. I have one, his old 1994 version is in my garage gym right now. Um, and I think it's fabulous. But in addition to the reverse hyper and some of the you know training modalities they employ there in the gym, he also developed a system where he essentially combined bits and pieces from other uh, other training programs and other training ideas that were you know used in the Soviet Union, the Eastern Bloc countries, Bulgaria, uh, and kind of took what he thought was best from each of those systems and kind of did a, you know, kind of a mashed it up into one program that he calls the conjugate program. Now, to be completely candid with you, what Louis Simmons and the guys at Westside Barbell do is not really conjugate training, it's concurrent training, where you try to improve several different athletic qualities at one time, i.e. trying to get stronger and faster, you know, all at once, rather than having, as, you know, traditional Western linear periodization, you know, volume being high, intensity being low in the beginning, and the volume decreasing as intensity increases toward the, you know, toward the competition. Uh, Louis developed this, this mode of training whereby a true conjugate training would be doing something like shooting a weighted basketball, where you're actually doing the sport and trying to, you know, improve your, qual your qualities of your strength while actually executing the skill required of you in your sport. But what Louis uh, did was he basically combined the max effort method, uh, which utilizes all the motor units of the body, builds absolute strength, uh, and he has his guys have basically do two max effort days, uh, one for the upper body, one for the lower body, and two dynamic effort days where you try to increase the rate of force production and speed. He has two of those days for both the upper, uh, one for upper, one for lower each week. And these are augmented or, uh, you know, he employs the repetition method using, you know, small muscle groups uh, or even large muscle groups at times to do uh, basically high rep, uh, hypertrophy type uh, movements to supplement and augment powerlifting training. And he developed this system and right away, it was not like everybody jumped on board and just, you know, everybody ran to the conjugate way of doing things. Uh, it was not until one of the earlier members of Westside, uh, this crazy, very uh, fascinating, enigmatic character named Matt Demmel, uh, squatted over a thousand pounds. And this is back in a day when a thousand pound squat was, was quite rare. Uh, once Matt Demmel did that, uh, Louis, you know, kind of gained more prominence in the lifting community and other coaches and athletes started to seek him out. Uh, he attracted another enigma from powerlifting, uh, a young Matt Winning, I'm sorry, a young Chuck Vogelpool, uh, later Matt Winning and some of those other younger guys would come, but the, the core of Westside basically started with Louis Simmons, uh, Chuck Vogelpool, and Matt Demmel. Uh, Bob Coe, uh, who's kind of characterized as this, you know, sidekick master motivator, uh, he, he was there in the early days, Mike Jester, uh, Dave Tate was an early member when they leave the commercial gym and go back to, you know, uh, a smaller uh, private facility. Uh, and it's just fascinating. There are no dues, there are no fees. Uh, he buys everybody breakfast. You know, back in the early days, that was not the case, but that's, that's what he does now. And it's, it's all about making you as strong as humanly possible. And the documentary does a great job of just kind of capturing the, the paradox. Like I said, Louis is a paradox. And uh, he 
is extremely devoted to his athletes up to a point uh, once the athlete uh, you know is no longer capable of breaking an all-time record or producing results or improving you know Westside's performance then he kind of it's kind of seems cold to an extent. He doesn't really have a whole lot of use for you at that point. Uh, he doesn't necessarily kick people out when they stop performing, but he's not, they don't get much of his attention and energy. And I think the way, I, you know, I took, what I took from this is Louie's been doing this for so long now that guys come to him when they're, you know, 20 years old, they want to be world champion, you know, whatever, in whatever sport use high powerlifting because that's the simplest to, to discuss and uh, Louis takes him under his wing he supports him he does all this stuff he, he you know imparts all this knowledge uh, in these individuals and then you know years go by sometimes you know more than a decade will go by and the guys will have accomplished what they set out to accomplish uh, and maybe they want to move on and do something different or kind of life gets in the way. They have families and they want to, you know, embark on their own careers. But Louis Simmons is the same. Uh, he still wants for you what you wanted for you back when you were 20. And he doesn't understand now that you're 30 and you maybe don't want those things anymore. He doesn't, that does not compute with Louis Simmons. Uh, he, he does not like social media. He doesn't really keep up you know, with the uh, changing uh, mores out in society. He wants, you know, he just got a certain way of doing things and he's got his expectations of his lifters and he makes that clear from the outset. This is not something that should surprise anyone that goes to Westside. Uh, he is there to make you strong so that you can make the gym strong. Uh, but it basically showcases dynamic how you know, these older guys that started with him kind of get banged up. Matt Dimmel, unfortunately, dies from an overdose. Uh, you know, Chuck Vogelpool starts to get banged up and older, and then he's got this new crowd that uh, Greg Panora, Luke Edwards, Matt uh, Winning, these guys that all come in, and he kind of starts over with them, and there's controversy there. The old-timers feel like he's kind of turning turning his back on them and focusing on the young blood because of what they can do for West Side, and that's... I mean, I don't know why they're surprised by that. That's basically what he did with them when they came in. Um, so it, it's, you know, Louie loves his athletes on the one hand and is extremely devoted. And then on the other hand, he can seem kind of callous and cold. Um, it it did, did a great job of kind of capturing the essence there. Uh, it is not a raw, uh, raw, West Side is the best side documentary. It does make you think certainly is very motivational but he has you know he, he the, Michael Fahey pulled from all walks of, of you know the spectrum of people and their opinion on West Side. Uh, you have uh, you know some comments by Matt Winning and Greg Panora they were interviewed and they they didn't part West Side on really good terms at all uh, and I think one of the, the big issues with West Side and why it's criticized so much today and like I said, Louis doesn't change. Louis Simmons is still the same Louis Simmons today that he was 40 years ago standing there. So when the sport changed initially, and I think Mark Bell makes a great point here, initially Louis Simmons would do whatever it took to keep up with those changes and kind of stay ahead of the curve on the cusp of innovation. And when the powerlifting gear, multiply gear in particular, uh, started to take off, Louis embraced that. But he kind of got stuck there, and that's where, in my opinion, he quit evolving. Um, he, I'm glad to see nowadays that there's some big raw lifters training at Westside, and I think if Westside devoted itself fully to raw powerlifting, they would dominate raw powerlifting the same way they dominated gear powerlifting. But nobody is really interested in gear powerlifting anymore. And I know I, I love Dave Tate. He plays a big part in the documentary and has played a huge role in kind of proselytizing for the conjugate you know training method you know that 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 the conjugate way um so has matt winnie but i think they're correct when they state that geared powerlifting showcases more technique than raw powerlifting uh, because you have to have such you have to be such uh, a technician at using the gear my counter to that and i think it's a logical argument I don't know how they would 
argue this, not many people tune in to watch powerlifting or engage in powerlifting to for the technique. Um, you don't turn, you don't watch or go on YouTube and watch somebody uh, perform a lift unless you're a beginner because you want to see what a technician that individual is. You want to see strong people moving heavy weights. That's what the sport was created for. If we were just going to be looking at technicians, we would watch some other sport, golf, Olympic lifting, where technique is far more important than strength. I'm not saying strength's not important in Olympic lifting at all, but it's certainly more, technique is more important. Um, so I think, you know, when their reasoning is that, well, it's more of a technique and that makes it more fun, no, that, if, if it's all about technique, then I think you're, 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 you're barking up the wrong tree. People aren't interested in powerlifting to watch the most technically gifted people in the world. We certainly want them to be techni technically proficient. We want to see the strongest people in the world, though. That's why we, we like power sports. Um, so, and I think Mark Bell does a great job of kind of, you know, expressing his opinion and, and you know, the, the problem with multiply lifting. The documentary does a great job of doing that as well, pointing out the, the problem of judging. In my humble opinion, I think that can be solved fairly easily. Uh, number one, just quit lifting in gear and get lift raw. Or two, just have different rules for raw squats. Maybe where the, uh, the uh, thigh has to be parallel to the floor or the uh, knee and the hip have to you know, it has to be a straight line between the two uh, because it's very rare for me to see, and I competed, when I started, geared powerlifting was powerlifting. There was no raw, um, but the gear back in 1995, 1996 was not nearly as uh, supportive as it became in later years. Um, it was still quite supportive. We, all of us who competed, the most supportive piece of equipment we had was the bench press shirt. And you know, myself, some of the guys I trained with, some of those guys could get as much as 40, 60 pounds out of a bench shirt. Now we hear of guys who can't bench press 400 pounds, bench pressing six, seven, and even you know higher poundages. And that's just that's just not what the support the sport should be about, in my opinion. And people have kind of gotten wise to that, and they, that's why it's dying out or it's definitely declining. They're more raw lifters by, you know, by far than geared lifters. And people can't really relate to it, and the documentary does a good job of covering that. All that aside, uh, it is, in my opinion, the single best power sport documentary ever created. Um, Dave Hoff, uh, Ed Cohen, Dave Tate, Luke Edwards, uh, Louis Simmons, all of the interviews are just great. Criticisms? Uh, I have no criticisms because all of my criticisms would be things that I know because of what I've read about these individuals and what I know of their you know, history and other people trying to interview them. There are things that are beyond Michael Fahey's control that he couldn't really, he couldn't really accomplish or give to his, to his audience. I would have loved to have seen an interview uh, with Chuck Vogelpohl, uh, but I know that uh, Chuck uh, v is not a social butterfly. He's not a chatterbox. Uh, I've heard, you know, podcasts with Dave Tate where and and uh, Jim Windler, and they basically say they tried to host a Q and A with him, and all he did was kind of stare and grunt, and eventually basically get you to answer the question. So it's probably people that Louis didn't want to be interviewed. Louis hates being interviewed. Um, it, it's with the subject matter that he had to work with and the unwilling participants that were the focus of the documentary, I think it, he did as, as, as good a job as, as possible. Um, it basically ends in a, in a very spectacular manner, and I don't want to spoil that, but uh, someone very, uh, very well associated with Westside kind of comes full circle, and uh, I, won't, like I, said, I won't spoil that for the audience, but... Uh, please go out and watch this movie. Uh, in the end, you kind of see Louis is trying to, to regroup and, and put together, you know, a group to go after some all-time world records. 
but he is he's because of his stubbornness and unwillingness to change and kind of evolve with society he's kind of at a loss as to how to motivate these guys to get out of them what he knows they're capable of uh, and he you know he laments the the fact the old days and says you know i can't go up and get in their face anymore i can't you know beat on them i can't push them i can't i can't compete with them because i'm so beat up and I think a great line in there is where Louis Simmons says, you know, I'm between heaven and hell right now because I've got to, I'm in this environment, but I can't compete. And I can't do to these guys what I need to do to get them to produce. Uh, Ed Cohen and the ending uh, sequence uh, and Bob Coe make very touching uh, statements. Uh, it's hard not to get emotional. But all in all, I think the documentary is as good as a documentary can, can get. Uh, I loaned it to, I, I bought the DVD and the digital download, and I gave the uh, DVD to a coworker who was, uh, has nothing to do with powerlifting, doesn't, doesn't uh, compete, has never competed, never seen powerlifting. He's just an attorney that works in the office with me. And I said, watch this and kind of give me your opinion and tell me what you think about it because as a power lifter, I'm biased and I'm probably gonna like it just because it's about power lifting, but I want you to be critical and honest and just tell me what you think. And he went home and watched it and brought it back to me and uh, he, he thought it was great too. Uh, he loved the way that uh, it focused on the, you know, the, the, the paradox of how Louis trains people, his whole, uh, the, he's almost samurai-like in his devotion to to the sport and and his his way of doing things um but as matt winning said you know is is his way or the highway and it can be a a really tough highway so like i said please go out and support this film buy a copy uh get get the digital download today and so uh, when you spend money your vote you vote with your dollars if you want to see films like this support the film thanks guys hope this helps